Hello and welcome to the KPI Institute's webinar, KPI Lifecycle, from the first action to the best version. My name is Andrei Costa and I will be your host for today, along with our presenter, Raduca Vintil. This webinar is part of a series of free educational materials that aim to enhance the knowledge and know-how of those interested, while also creating a bridge between us as a company and you, our public. The KPI Institute is a research organization specialized in business performance. It operates research programs in 12 practice domains, each linked to a certification course, ranging from strategy and KPIs to employee performance, and from customer service to innovation performance. Today, 15 years after the KPI Institute was created, we can proudly say that our products and services have reached professionals on five continents, and that our public comprises a worldwide community of around 84,000 members online and 30,000 registered companies on smartkpis.com. Today's webinar is aimed at organizations and professionals thinking of implementing a performance management system based on KPIs, as well as to those already in the implementation process, curious to understand the system's overall big picture and all of the associated efforts. It will be delivered by Raluca Vintila, one of our most senior management consultants with the KPI Institute. Some of the most significant consultancy projects Raluca has been involved include the following. Performance Management System Architecture Design for the organizational, divisional, and individual levels, and organizational KPI selection for businesses operating in the oil and gas, transportation, telecommunications, and education industries. She has also delivered training courses, conference presentations, business simulations, and other webinars related to the use of KPIs. This presentation lasts between 30 to 40 minutes. Please feel free to ask any questions you might have during the webinar, as they will be answered at the end of the presentation in our Q&A session. Enjoy the KPI Institute's webinar, KPI Lifecycle, from the first action to the best version. Now, I would like to invite Raluca to begin her presentation. Hello, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on the time zone where you are located at the moment. It's my pleasure to be hosting you today through the KPI, KPI Lifecycle webinar. Initially, we're going to discover the stages and the steps necessary as part of this model. Afterwards, we will discover the tools that uh, are being used and actually the most important and the most relevant tools that uh, are used along the KPI lifecycle stages. And we will conclude with, uh, by summarizing the best practices that this model is proposing, as well as being aware and increasing the awareness around the pitfalls that might appear throughout the KPI lifecycle. Of course, we will end up with a Q&A session that my colleague Andre was telling you about. As what we are going to learn today, we're going to understand the KPI implementation project as uh, it, will, it, it represents the operational uh, side of the KPI lifecycle, along with the main stages and some lessons learned that I would as well like to share with you, given the previous business experience that I have had. First step, the KPI lifecycle stages and uh, the main, uh, the main uh, components or activities that are encompassed. Well, this KPI lifecycle and the whole model has derived and it has as a root, as a foundation, the KPI management framework concept map that the KPI Institute has been proud to develop up to this moment. If you are wondering what would be the first steps um, that uh, the KPIs, when the KPIs appear in the organizational story, in the organization, organization's journey in managing performance, uh, we would say that the KPI selection is the first uh, and the very, at the very beginning of this uh, journey. The KPI selection, uh, along with the documentation, data gathering, and visualization, represents the measurement corresponding building blocks. As initially, uh, you need to measure the data, you need to measure performance in order to be able to manage performance. If there is no measurement, most likely you will be managing uh, by, um, by different, uh, by different uh, and maybe some more subjective um, 
perspectives which is not recommended in your organizational context. As part of the measurement along with the KPI selection comes the KPI documentation which we will explore in depth afterwards with data gathering and visualization. So upon these four building blocks of the framework we would be able to have the data for the KPIs we have previously selected. If you are wondering, of course, before the measurement itself, the strategic planning needs to take place. So the KPIs come along the objectives, the strategic objectives, otherwise we would not call them key or uh, performance indicators afterwards. They need to be, to be linked to the strategic objectives of an organization. The strategic objectives of an organization derive from the strategic planning process which should take place prior to this. Well, let's say that the strategic planning has been completed. Let's say that the performance measurement has been completed. And then we go for the management side. We have the data. We know the directions. We know where we would like to go, but we are not there yet. It means that we need to take an active management of our performance journey. This managerial journey starts by um, analyzing and reporting the data that has been already gathered in order to facilitate a decision-making process that is objective and um, that, that relies on the data, on performance data, in order to address initiatives and through to, to encompass a learning and improvement component along this performance management cycle so that we ultimately have a performance oriented culture within our organization we will zoom out zoom in these uh, these these steps because they represent as well the steps of the establishment stage of the KPI life cycle if you would like to put it this way all the building blocks from the previous stage become the KPI life cycle establishment steps. It means that at the beginning of, um, of, uh, of the PMS journey for an organization that has, this, that has decided to work with KPIs and to, uh, to develop and deploy a formal and structured performance management system, these would be the steps that are requested to be taken. The ones on the left side, the establishment. First, it, uh, we need to, to identify the needs of an organization. Usually, in this needs identification stage, we decide whether we would like to go for, um, as, as per the PMS design, to go for the scorecard, the dashboard, and either a healthogram, or we, we can only opt for, for some of the performance management tools. So depending on the current needs, we come up with, uh, with the proper solution. Afterwards comes the selection stage, the documentation, visualization, activation, analysis, and the decision-making part, which have been already uh, documented in the building blocks of, um, of the framework. If you are uh, paying like a lot of attention to this KPI life cycle stage of establishment, you will see that it ends up with a documentation refresh. Imagine that you are now, now within your organization in the following scenario. Up to this moment, you had no KPI, you, you had no performance related discussions at organizational level, neither departmental or individual level, but your organization has decided that it's the right time to go for a formal and structured approach in managing performance. It means that you will go through each of these stages on the left side. First, you will identify the needs and uh, create a proper dimension of the project. You will organize the workshops to select the KPIs for the strategic objectives. You will deploy the documentation phase for each of the KPIs that has been selected. You will collect the data for these KPIs, you will analyze it, and you will be able to, to, make, some, to make decisions based on this, performance, uh, on this performance data and communicate it afterwards. It means that you've been for the first time ever in this cycle in, in, in this flow or in this chronology of, of the steps. And the last, uh, the last recommended idea or action to be taken now would be to look back and see what has happened, how things have been deployed, like stop and stare towards the past because you will enter the next, uh, the next stage. You will be oriented into the future and you would like to get uh, the, the learning takeaways from the first stage 
as inputs in the second stage. So we will refresh documentation. Maybe you have uh, identified after after this first uh, after the establishment that some of the KPIs are maybe not the most relevant ones for the objective that has been uh, has been defined. Maybe you need to do some um, slight changes to to bring some slight changes to the system. So now is the perfect time to look back and see what has to be recalibrated and to recalibrate in order to go into the next step into the next stage with uh, with a proper and a better documentation it's like this is happening um in a natural and uh, normal manner by the time you deploy something for the first time you learn the lessons and you are willing to apply these lessons learned in the second stage the second stage the use or the usage of uh, of kpi as you can see not all the steps from the stage one are replicable in the second stage because there is no need at this moment to identify um, to identify uh, the needs for the PMS. There is no need to select the KPI because you've been anyways previously selecting. You have either refreshed some of the KPIs or not. The documentation is a one-time event that you are doing. You only enter the operational side of uh, performance management, like collecting the data for the KPIs analyzing reporting and making decisions based on the performance data and of course communicating the decisions this would be the second stage but uh, it's not only the um, the six steps displayed in here happening once but these are happening in an ongoing manner for the next month you will collect data analyze data report data make decisions based on the data and communicate the decisions um, in the next six months you will do the same in the 12 months, after 12 months, you will be doing the same. Now, the specific comes on the long run, when the performance management system based on KPIs evolves. In this stage, we can uh, see ourselves in four situations or scenarios. In regards to our performance management system and KPIs, we can see ourselves either maintaining some of the elements or refreshing some of the elements, but at the same time, we might see ourselves suspending or superseding some of the elements. What I would like to do is to zoom in this evolu evolution stage because uh, this is what governs the long-term perspective of PMS and to understand it in a one, uh, as one by one. Well, in terms of the KPIs, there are some, some uh, KPI types that will most probably remain from one cycle, from one stage to the other in our organizational uh, journey towards performance. And um, some examples of such KPIs that we would still like them to appear in our either scorecards or uh, dashboards in our performance management tools are indicators such as the net profit uh, or the budget variance. I think most likely we will always care about customer satisfaction or processes optimized within the organization. So these are some examples of uh, indicators that most probably they will remain with us from one cycle to the other. We will care about the financial resources. We will care about the customers or the stakeholders we are addressing our activities to and internally with the processes. These are just some, some examples so that you can understand the differences. When it comes to the second scenario, the refresh, for instance, we can take the customer satisfaction as an example. The refresh means that previously, in the previous cycle, in the previous stage of uh, uh, working with KPIs, we've been using as a method to collect the data to survey our customers and to ask the, qu the following question. Are you satisfied with our products and services? And they would need to answer in a yes or no format to this question. But for the future, we have, let's say, identified that this is not enough anymore just to categorize our customers into either satisfied or dissatisfied. But uh, we would like to, to bring up some refresh to the calculation method. And we ended up with a one to five scale in terms of the satisfaction. 
maybe we end up uh, with different strategies for the customers located in level one, level two, level four, and level five. It means that for level four, I'm satisfied, but not totally satisfied. So there is some space for improvement and companies can learn from that space of improvement. In a scenario, in comparison to the first one, when we've been only asking people yes or no. So the KPI name has remained the same. We have been just refreshing the KPI in, um, in this new stage that we are uh, following at this moment. The third scenario in KPI lifecycle evolution would be suspend. There are some KPIs that um, that we decide, I know it's, it's not easy, this is from my point of view one of the hardest scenarios to let go the data, uh, but I think it's also the most valuable one to understand that the efforts of collecting these data are not necessary anymore because uh, either the behavior has been changed or the KPI has done its job. An example would be key marketing materials with errors. Imagine that your company is producing marketing materials with errors that uh, your colleagues are attending either um, events, um, like face-to-face -face interactions with clients, with stakeholders, and the materials that they are presenting about your company contain errors. You can decide to integrate this KPI in your scorecard, and uh, the KPIs will most likely display red or yellow results um, in, in a short-term approach, but as the marketing team realizes that an emphasis has been addressed and uh, there are some organizational expectations in regards to their um, materials producing process, they might end up deciding to introduce a new, um, let's say, either quality check step or another review of the materials prior to, uh, let's say, the printing stage or the release stage. So the moment this KPI will illustrate green results, let's say for six months or for, for 12 months, the marketing team will understand the message, will already have a change behavior, and there is no more, more need from our side to ask for the data for this indicator. Because it's already green for a while, things have relaxed, we all understood that the marketing materials do not contain errors anymore, and it's the right time to let it go. The fourth scenario in KPI lifecycle evolution is supersede. Well, in this moment, continuing with the customer satisfaction example, uh, we have just ended up a performance management cycle in working with KPIs, but we have become more mature in the way we, we, we operate the data. And we ended up with the conclusion that Customer satisfaction is not enough anymore for us. And we decide to replace this KPI in our, uh, in our tool with something that is more advanced. In terms of customer satisfaction, the advanced indicator would be the net promoter score. So we decided not to ask our customers anymore whether they are um, satisfied, yes or no, or on a scale from one to five. The KPI itself has been changed to something more advanced. Now we decide to uh, calculate how many of our customers are willing to recommend our products and services to other people. So it's more advanced in, the, in, in customer relationship. If you would like to put it not to the external environment, but bring it to the internal environment, another example would be converting or replacing the employee satisfaction, like satisfaction with the working conditions, with the salary, with the, with the granular, um, granular um, aspects or elements at the workplace, with something more advanced, with something more mature. And we can replace this KPI and, uh, to, with, with the employee engagement, which shows a higher level of loyalty and um, is addressing a more mature dimension in relationship to our employees. So these would be the four options that might appear that we might see ourselves in the evolution stage. Maintain, refresh, suspend, and supersede. If you would like to go, um, to go mentally go to the KPI lifecycle building blocks and um, the, the framework that we rely on, um, you, you would be able to say that this is not uh, maybe fully applicable in a time format. Well, when you bring it, when you bring it to a project level, 
to a project level will people get involved and um, the time requirements uh, appear and certain steps that need to be allocated or distributed according to each and everyone's responsibility, it becomes true. There are not just uh, steps that uh, might be leading us to the idea of uh, having theories applicable, but it becomes reality. Well, by applying the KPI lifecycle uh, steps that we have just discovered in a project plan, in a KPI implementation project plan, or PMS based on KPIs, um, you have here an example of all the stages that are in a chronological manner exposed. For instance, uh, um, with, a, with a blue light blue background, there are the system design aspects, and the system activation aspects and steps are reflected in a, in a light yellow background. So defining or reviewing the strategy with the objective, selecting the indicators, documenting the indicators, aligning the indicators across the organizational levels down to employee level would be part of the system design. On the other side, when you start the same um, active managerial journey towards performance, it's about collecting the data, visualizing, uh, visualizing the data or configuring the data in a BI solution, most probably, analyzing reporting and making the decision so that you can uh, end up the cycle with learning and improvement, learning from one cycle to the other and applying the lessons learned in the future. So in terms of this becoming reality, it becomes reality, it becomes more granular and um, and, and the deployment can take different um, time, uh, time horizons. What you can see here is um, not only the names, the stages, the main stages, but also the activities encompassed in each of the stages. That's when you realize that there are some efforts to be um, put in, inputted by department heads or division heads uh, from the business unit coordinators, so on and so forth. That's when uh, the KPI selection workshops appear. Um, you get a full understanding on the documentation, what the alignment encompasses and how it should be deployed down to down to the employee level, it becomes even more real. Imagine like a project plan with all these ideas encompassed with uh, with time reflections and responsibles along the way. What I would like to share with you is an example of um, how a Gantt chart would be for such a project. It in in this uh, example, um, it encompasses it has five modules. First is the performance audit. So before starting the performance management journey, we look at what the organization has up to this moment. At least for the individual level, there might be some performance appraisals that we could relate to uh, in case no strategy has been, uh, has been operated up to that moment. So we conduct the audit and afterwards we go for the first level, the corporate level or strategic, the organizational level. Afterwards, it goes to departmental, to departmental level, in our case here, from week four to week seven, and down to individual level, where I would say, um, depending on your organizational size, size um, that's where most of the efforts get to be allocated. <clears throat> the system activation comes as the fifth module, the system activation. Um, and as you can see in here, this organization was able to conduct the first performance review meeting as 5.3 activity in the third working, uh, in the third working uh, month. That's when the system gets activated and the decision making with the learning and improvement are happening. When it comes to the main tools that we recommend to be used throughout the KPI lifecycle stages and through this journey of uh, performance management, there are four key tools that are bringing strategy to life and the KPIs to life. They would be the strategy map, the scorecard, the KPI documentation form, and the portfolio of initiatives. The first one, which represent the first in the very beginning, the step at the very beginning, um, um, the foundation of, of the system is the strategy map. Yes, this is not related to KPIs yet, 
But if you don't have the objectives in here, if you don't have these objectives, uh, most likely your KPIs will not be strategy oriented. What we need to reference the moment we select the KPIs are the strategic objectives. Usually we go for the traditional perspectives um, of the balance scorecard, which are the financial, the customer, financial perspective, customer perspective, internal processes and people learning and growth along with the, the objectives. Of course, you can have a, a different uh, design that is specific to, to your organization and what your organization um, operates, but this is just um, an, an example of a strategy map. The same perspectives with the objectives are replicated into the scorecard. Here is where the KPIs appear. The KPIs are measuring the achievement of the strategic objectives that have been previously defined in the strategy map. As per the columns perspective of a scorecard, it brings the specific of time through three dimensions. It has, it encompasses the previous result, the current result, and the future result as a target. Imagine that um, now is the beginning of April and we would like to conduct our performance review meeting dedicated to March. It means that our previous result will be February, current result will be March, and the target will be um, like the target will be the future, the desired level of results for the upcoming uh, upcoming period of time. So it brings three perspectives of time in just a simple sequence, and. Um, the one that uh, the, the traffic light color, uh, the scale that we are using, can give us a glimpse on how healthy we are in managing our performance, in um, in uh, in relating uh, our corrective actions to improve the KPI results in order to make the strategy happen, to operationalize the strategy. For each and every KPI that you see here on the left side in the scorecard, we conduct the KPI documentation process. It happens in a standardized template, as you can see on the right side of the screen. So all the KPIs get standardized in the same format. In here, our proposed KPI documentation form has around 50 plus fields. It's not necessary to have them all, but some of the most important fields would be KPI definition, um, and the KPI name uh, being the first one. If you don't know what you are measuring, most probably you will not uh, understand the definition. So KPI name, KPI definition, uh, calculation formula with the subordinate measures. Um, and one of the most, let's say, the most important fields of the KPI documentation form would be the targets and threshold field, where we document what does it mean to be green as a result, uh, what does it mean to, to be uh, within the tolerance limits as the yellow threshold, and what is uh, hardly acceptable, which is the red side. There are some administrative um, aspects included in the KPI documentation form, such as who is the data custodian, who is the data owner, so on and so forth. So for all the KPIs that measure the achievement of our strategic objectives, we conduct the KPI documentation um, process to make sure that all the people in the organization have the same understanding on how, on what a, that, what does uh, that KPI mean and how it is calculated. It uniforms all our understandings in, in just one sequence in order to avoid misinterpretation and miscalculations. Well, let's say that um, our um, our KPIs um, in in the scorecard reflect a lot of red colors um, which gives us to which takes us to the next uh, to the next tool it means that is the right time to address initiatives or corrective actions in order to change or to improve our KPI current results because we would like to get the results to the desired level to to have an equal um, equal result to the target but we are not there yet, and since we are not there yet, or we would like to maintain something, it's the moment to address the initiatives. All the initiatives get into the portfolio of initiatives, or the list of projects. You can put, uh, you can call them synonyms, the, the initiative with the project that are um, all listed in one single file that from one month to the other, it appears to our world. So it's not a matter of only defining what measures our performance, 
what are the actions that we need to uh, to take in order to to reach the desired level it's a matter of bringing these tools into let's say weekly or monthly uh, monthly preoccupation of the departments of the managers of the team members to be aware of all it takes in order to get there through our journey to give a practical example on on the reflection of this flow, let's say that our increased customer satisfaction objective is measured through uh, the following KPIs, percentage customer satisfaction, the number of complaints that we receive and the complaints resolution rate. So uh, re reflecting our, our capacities to solve the complaints that are uh, received. Well, we don't. We are not there yet in terms of managing complaints. We are, we have difficulties in tracking all the complaints that um, our customers are submitting to us due to our um, to our uh, lack of quality in delivering the products and services. It means that is the right time to address an initiative. And this example is the internal complaints tracking system initiative that will solve out this process of uh, of uh, handling the complaints and solving the complaints in a quality and timely manner so that the customers um, get to be more and more satisfied and our objective to be achieved. When it comes to the best practices that such a, such a model integrates, well, they will be the following. The first one in terms of KPI documentation. Um, I know it's, uh, it's, it's a natural need of organizations to come up with documentation but it at the beginning is it is only seen as an extra effort that needs to be done and the people fear of doing more most probably if you don't uh, park or if you don't uh, suspend some of the activities the employees will reject the kpi documentation because um even though it's a one time event it it, it we need to 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 be honest uh, it takes it takes some time to document each and every KPI. So um, what um, what I think that this model brings up as a, as a best practice is the integration of the KPI documentation. So given the fact that we've learned these lessons from previous projects and interactions with customers, we strongly encourage the KPI documentation to appear as one of the most uh, as one of the main stages in uh, performance management uh, implementation in the PMS implementation and throughout the KPI lifecycle. Of course, you can miss this out. You can miss it from the from your project, but ultimately you will see that um, during the performance review meeting, people instead of being uh, of being focused around making decisions and addressing initiatives, they will have questions like th on the technical side of the indicator. Uh, what was this all about with um, with the uh, active revenue sources how was it calculated what was the base what was the reference in this case and they will they will forget uh, quite fast what the uh, what does it contain so uh, a rigorous kpi documentation with uh, will uh, facilitate um, the decision making process and it will bring clarity and common understanding within the organization another important aspect is that it um, implies the KPI alignment through the cascading process. Well, it means that performance is everyone's job. Performance is for everyone. That's why all the organizational level are addressed. And we go with this, uh, for example, the scorecard that you have just seen, uh, consider it uh, is uh, the organizational scorecard. It means that in the second stage, we check the organizational scorecard and we go to each and every team or department of the organization and we ask each and every one, where is your contribution in this scorecard? Are there some, some KPIs that are applicable to your department? And we, uh, we cascade these KPIs. The second question would be, uh, is there something that you don't directly contribute to, or is, I mean, is that your uh, identical KPI, but maybe there's something that we can adapt to your environment? If it's adaptable, we, we adapt it and we integrate it in the departmental scorecard. And the third stage, stage would be um, 
the specific ones. So we look after the KPIs that have been cascaded and we ask, is there something else that uh, would, uh, would need to be integrated in order to, to have your complete image around performance? If yes, we add. And most likely there are some, uh, some indicators under the internal processes perspective of the scorecard. So it ensures alignment, it ensures the distribution of the organizational scorecard and KPIs across uh, the rest of the org organizational levels. And what, what uh, the most important thing that it does is that it aligns priorities. I hear quite often um, the discrepancies between the team's priorities, like what is important for me is not important for you. What is important for you is not important for me. So uh, uh, it gives an image of uh, disrupted uh, efforts within the organization when what we learned at the beginning is that an organization should have a strategy and should stick to that strategy. So the strategies, um, priorities encompassed are aligned at the same time in this process of cascading and alignment um, in working with the, with the corresponding KPIs. So each and every one has the same directions and uh, they understand what is important and they can, uh, they can focus their efforts towards the same directions. The third um, aspect or specific of, uh, for this KPI lifecycle model, it would be the performance management chance to recalibrate. As you have seen, at the end of each stage, we recommend to refresh the documentation, to stop and stare and recalibrate whenever it's necessary to recalibrate. Of course, we don't encourage um, adaptability to the extent of changing so often the KPIs or the objectives that uh, we ultimately we, we end up with the system that is unstable but uh, we do recommend for things to be adjusted either objectives or KPIs as you have seen from one cycle to the other you realize that maybe you did not nail it from a very beginning but there are things that you can improve in the upcoming stage so we allow this adaptability through the and through the performance management recalibration, refreshing um, the, the documentation and updating it. And last but not least, um, it stimulates a natural and authentic learning and improvement. By having the data, you will immediately know where you are in terms of your strategy implementation. By having the target set, you have already um, uh, defined in a clear manner where you would like to be. Um, personally, I feel that at the moment you look upon these two, um, two numbers, you immediately need to, and you immediately feel that actions are required, corrective actions. Um, it gives you the chance to learn and immediately improve. The performance gaps are addressed in this manner and uh, not only addressed but integrated, as you remember, in the portfolio of initiatives uh, from one meeting to from one meeting to um, to the other and uh, translating it translating it in a constant preoccupation. So it's not a matter of only defining something and sticking to it, but naturally improving and uh, addressing the performance gaps that might appear along the way. In terms of the pitfalls that um, arise the moment we deploy performance management systems based on KPIs, the first and I think the, the biggest challenge is the KPI selection. There are some pitfalls that we might see ourselves in front of, but they are, um, they are definitely, um, there are solutions to overcome these, uh, these challenges. And for the KPI selection, which I think is one of the most critical aspects, would be the following. Um, people complain about having um, subjective, a lot of subjective influences in, uh, in the measurements. And we rely on the fact that um, this subjectivity appears because we allow it to appear. So uh, a rigorous and an objective KPI selection with, would, um, 
would uh, take place the moment we apply uh, the recommended techniques such as uh, KPI balancing, such as the value flow analysis that, uh, that we are conducting the moment we select the KPIs. And we engage these, uh, these employees along the way in KPI selection workshops where they apply the techniques so that um, the system itself in the end um, does not have this subjective touch that um, or irrelevant touch that people uh, might complain afterwards about um, because they ensure a high level of, of uh, objectivity. We are driven by the objectives. We are driven by um, the image that we would like our organization to have tomorrow or in the upcoming future. So uh, the moment we set up the KPIs, we have these uh, as reference points and we don't think about, oh, okay, who should be uh, responsible of this KPI of activating this KPI of reach or reaching this target because these stages are coming afterwards. In this moment, we are not driven by uh, these feelings of gaming the system, not including the KPI because um, it uh, it might be uh, it might have a negative effect on, on my job. But we only guide ourselves on the positive side and on the performance side of of the business. The second biggest challenge would be, uh, as I have previously mentioned, not documenting the KPIs in the first stage. Uh, what we are using is uh, a standardized template that afterwards the employees, um, either data custodians or KPI owners are completing so that we minimize the chances of, um, of creating uh, either misunderstanding or wrong calculations. In terms of the decision making and uh, initiative management, <laughs> um, what I what I often hear the moment I interact with people uh, during the training courses is that um, performance exists, but performance only takes place the moment they are in the meeting room. The moment they get out of the meeting room, the performance discussion is over. Um, what uh, this is this is an environment or this uh, this thing is characterizing a perform an organizational culture i don't personally resonate with um i myself be might be too brainwashed by using apis and <laughs> being performance oriented to be honest but um i personally think and we we, we uh, generally recommend performance to be a daily preoccupation it means that the initiatives and all the decisions that have been taken in, in a performance review meeting are going to represent the actions of our next week, next two weeks or, or stuff like this. Um, we will focus the moment we get out of the train of the of the meeting room, we will focus on how to uh, um, identify better ways in achieving our KPI targets and improve our KPI results in order to get to the desired level. It means that we will constantly be triggered by performance, by ultimately by implementing the strategy that we've we have agreed uh, upon. Um, and we will calibrate and focus our, our efforts as well in this direction. Um, it's a matter of unlocking performance potential by um, transcending the performance preoccupations beyond, uh, beyond the performance, uh, performance meetings. It has to be a daily preoccupation from our point of view. That's why we get to the initiatives uh, portfolio, uh, to the portfolio of initiatives and uh, the scorecards that most probably you look after with the monthly frequency and uh, the other support, uh, support tools. So overall, it's important to build up a performance uh, management system implementation plan that is coherent enough and um, is extensive enough as to, um, as to cover both employees' need and organizations' need in building up an objective, uh, objective system that, um, that, uh, um, that is unlocking their uh, performance potential. Secondly, it's important to, to understand the KPI life cycle stages where you are and where you might be in, uh, in the future and to make the best use of uh, the most important performance management tools, which are the strategy map, 
defining the objectives. The scorecard where we populate the objectives with corresponding KPIs that measure their achievement, documenting each and every KPI in the documentation form, and integrating all the initiatives or the corrective actions that are implied the moment our KPI results are not meeting their targets. This would be the whole flow of, um, of, uh, of events uh, around the KPI lifecycle stages and to this process. Do not forget performance is a, is a daily preoccupation and should be a daily preoccupation the moment we would like our current, um, current um, organizational image to be transformed in our desired state of evolution. Now, um, I would like to, to ask my colleague Andre if there are questions that have been uh, addressed during the, pres in the presentation to, uh, to share with us, so I could answer. Uh, so during the presentation, we've actually received a couple of questions. The first one is, how long should it take to complete all the main steps in the model you've shown us? Well, in terms of time, I will go for the favorite uh, answer. It depends. Uh, as you can envision, it depends. First of all, it depends on your organizational size. You can't uh, you can't uh, go for the same approach when you are talking about a company with only 60 people, 60 employees, or a company that has uh, 100,000 employees. Things go different. Uh, of course, the speed is higher the moment you talk about smaller groups. But generally, and um, from the methodology point of view, um, I think that the establishment stage of the KPI life cycle will most likely take between three up to six months. Uh, there is as well another influencing factor, which is the organization's intentions um, and the desire to implement, uh, to which speed do they, do they want to implement this uh, uh, performance management system based on KPIs, as, uh, as it usually comes as an extra project to be, to be encompassed and still the operations need to move on, so it's not by including this uh, into, into the current uh, pro portfolio of projects, it's also an, uh, a question to be, to be answered to. So generally the first stage can take between like three to six months. Uh, the moment you get to the usage, to the second stage, I think is something that goes after maybe six, yeah, six to 12 months after one year, you can say that you got mature enough or maybe one year and a half that uh, considering that you have monthly monthly performance review meetings after one year, you can consider yourself able to go to the evolution stage uh, where only some, some changes are implied, but generally the people got used to the process. They understood how to work with the KPIs. They have integrated the KPIs and the corrective actions that need to be taken to correct current results in their daily operations. So people got used to all this and they got to the chance of um, getting close to performance. Yeah, that would be. All right, and now we've received two questions that are fairly similar. So the first one would uh, state, who should be responsible for the KPI lifecycle? And the other one, which I believe relates to this one, is who executes the performance management system implementation plan? Inner employees or outside contractors? Mm -hmm. uh, well, as I've told you, performance is something that covers each and every employee from the organization. But the extent to which they are responsible of this is different. For instance, um, what we recommend is to create an internal team that will govern the implementation of, uh, of the project. This dedicated capability should uh, create a link between um, even the top management, middle management, and the lower, uh, the lower organizational levels so that uh, the whole image is well understood. Um, the responsibility would most probably um, 
get to the performance manager in case there is any or the strategy manager um, however it is uh, it is defined in the organizational structure but by the time you um, like you orchestrate this system you will need the involvement of department heads because the performance manager um, won't be able to understand to fully understand all the processes and all the operations of the teams so they will need uh, this person will need the help of the department members uh, department team members or the head of department so by the time this life cycle is happening uh, different groups of internal stakeholders are involved uh, involved uh, around the around the project of course you can you can uh, opt to um, to to join the forces with external uh, with external an external entity such as we are in the moment you you design the systems but this the system but uh, I think that it will only be the initial effort to design to put everything in place to do, select the KPIs to do, review the documentation of the KPIs but on the long run um, I think the external will not still be um, in for for the long run of the system because uh, the purpose would be of this collaboration would be um, in, in the scope of um, internal capabilities being able to sustain the system that has been created so to be to be self-sustainable with the internal capabilities all right now at some point you mentioned measurement or reporting discrepancies between departments and there's a question in your opinion what is the best way to overcome these discrepancies if there is a best way mm -hmm. um, yes this is uh, our recommended I would say um, from our point of view is the best way that this uh, recommendation that we are doing is to uh, deploy KPI cascading workshops and to have as a reference as input tools the ones from the higher managerial level and to create to design and deploy the lower management the lower level uh, organizational level uh, tools with the right measurements um, upon these uh, these vertical let's say vertical alignment or if you would like to put it so as cascading uh, effort uh, is recommended to have as well an horizontal touch it means that all the scorecards of all the departments upon the cascading upon the completion of the cascading process are displayed in a horizontal format so you can check whether there are some uh, conflicting objectives or some conflicting measurements um, to be honest most of the organizations end up after the vertical approach they end up the process there and um, um, this might be yeah another another pitfall of the system the fact that you don't address the system in a horizontal manner as well like across uh, across um, w within uh, the organizational the same organizational uh, level um, there are methodologies um, to to illustrate this approach that I'm just sharing uh, about is a cascading or a vertical cascading vertical alignment and horizontal alignment um, if you are more curious uh, about this there are some other uh, webinars that we have available and I think one of them is dedicated to this part of uh, alignment and uh, and cascading but generally we apply these uh, these techniques in workshops first to address the vertical uh, perspective of uh, cascading and aligning aligning objectives and KPIs and afterwards the vertical for each uh, organizational uh, sorry the, the horizontal for each uh, organizational uh, level at the, with, with dedicated efforts all right now another question and this one props up quite a bit you should be used to receiving this one um, so as you already know many organizations don't have a proper measuring culture implemented they're not used to measuring performance so uh, as has become a custom how can you ensure that a performance management system project is welcomed by employees how do you get their buy-in basically <laughs> yes we, we get to this point again um, it brings a smile on my face because uh, it was uh, as well um, 
one of the central points, the central uh, discussions from the previous webinar that I have conducted. Uh, but to sum it up, I think that um, this performance management system has to be linked with its purpose. So why are we doing this? Should be clearly stated and justified in front of employees the moment it appears in their world. Because imagine, um, you are used and um, yeah, it reminded me of uh, of an analogy that uh, we've been discussing in the last training course that has been delivered in Malaysia. Uh, we've been discussing about how employees feel by creating this comparison. Usually, um, we sleep in our bed at our home on the same pillow for, let's say, a longer period of time. It's like you got used to, uh, it's comfortable, you know the coordinates, it's your environment, you've been there previously, you got used to discomfort. The moment uh, the KPIs appear in our world, as you have stated, there are no measurements, no performance indicators up to this stage, is similar to an entity that comes, another person that comes and is pulling the pillow from uh, um, while you are sleeping, is, is taking the pillow and changing the pillow that you are used to sleep on. Um, there are some changes that need to be managed the moment this performance management system and that is based on KPIs. Uh, they have to be recognized, they have to be addressed, either in a change management plan uh, where campaigns are deployed in order for people to be aware of the purpose, aware of the intentions of on uh, why, why um, do these KPIs appear to calm down everyone and not to feel controlled. Usually they feel that uh, this transparency that the system is creating, it's a matter of control and maybe punishment in case there are red results. Well, no, we don't resonate with this perspective and we clearly uh, state that performance should be an opportunity and uh, the KPI should be the best excuse to talk about what we can do better and best in order to cover our gaps. It's not a matter of leaving people aside and continuing um, in, uh, in an incomplete manner, let's say, but to have people on board and to work with them because they are the ones that know best where things can be in in improved. If you improve at individual level, this part and this part and this part, if there are improvements that are taking place at department level with this department, financial department, production department, marketing department, the effects and the positive effects will ultimately um, lead to, uh, to improve the results at organizational level. So that's the spirit and the environment, the context when, uh, when the performance management system should, should appear. And uh, this purpose should be constantly reminded. Of course, it's also a matter of methodology on how people get the buy-in uh, to, to illustrate professionalism the moment you apply the methodology to gain their trust, uh, meaning that um, you understand the stages, you, uh, you know how to guide people along their uh, understanding and increased awareness. It's a matter of, as I've told you, deploying campaigns if it's necessary. At some point, uh, Volkswagen to Brazil, I think uh, they build up even a robot to share the strategy along uh, the employees in the production um, in the production side um, to get them on board to get their buy-in to create transparency to commun to better communicate intentions and to create this uh, ultimate uh, performance oriented culture all right and we have a follow-up question to this one in your opinion, could a performance management system be complemented with a recognition program, or would this make the PMS system, the PMS system too convoluted? Well, people expect to be rewarded the moment uh, they they illustrate um, like outstanding. They have outstanding results. It's normal to to have this need of being uh, recognized for your work and uh, to be stimulated for the process, that, the, the progress that you have done. Um, ultimately, it gets, gets linked to um, compensation and benefits, rewards and recognition system, of course, in conjunction to what the HR um, is, uh, is deploying or orchestrating at the moment. Um, but an important note should be, should be made 
um, in this discussion. What we don't recommend is to immediately link, like the moment you have launched the performance management system, to immediately link the KPI results to uh, rewards and recognition. Uh, why we don't recommend this practice is, uh, is because at the beginning, you are yourself as an organization, a beginner in working with this. So um, maybe after the second, the third, the fourth cycle, you can, uh, when the moment you get a little more mature in um, defining the KPIs, the right KPIs, the moment you will uh, feel fully, um, even comfortable, and you will fully trust uh, the relevancy of your KPIs along uh, with the, with the objectives. The moment you will uh, you will know for sure that the targets you have selected uh, that you have uh, uh, set up are the right targets for your KPIs that are ambitious enough, but at the same time realistic enough for the employees. Um, after you get a little more mature in working with performance tools, performance measurements, I think the system is um, is ready. To, to be connected to rewards and recognitions. And especially imagine if you link it with uh, financial rewards, the moment your system is not mature enough and maybe the targets you have initially uh, set up are quite low in comparison to what people can do, can actually do and they, uh, what, can, uh, what they can actually deliver. And you even link them to financial rewards, I think it will lead to, an, uh, to a situation which is not desired in your organizational environment. So by the time you ensure all the prerequisite, uh, prerequisites of uh, maturity in operating this system, um, the system will be and your organization will be ready to link it to rewards and recognition. But immediately, like at the beginning when you have just launched it, I think it's quite early to envision, uh, like to, to link it immediately with uh, with rewards and uh, recognition system, which is, I mean, a side project of what uh, usually the HR capability um, is coordinating. All right, and now we have one last question, and I'll admit this one is a bit of a head scratcher. So, <laughs> if if in a company, if in a, if in an organization, there is no strategy or performance initiatives already established is how what is their ability to apply all of the elements that you mentioned about KPI lifecycle tools such as the initiatives portfolio mm -hmm. um, well it's a matter of still starting it somehow <laughs> I mean the moment there is nothing you just uh, start doing it which is the best strategic plan that you can uh, that you can have at that moment um, Another advice that I'm usually that I'm uh, usually um, sharing is the following: at the beginning, you don't have to take it all. It doesn't have to be the state of art. It doesn't have to be the perfect and the masterpiece. Work around the versions. Let's say that this year um, you can only dedicate the efforts in building up uh, your strategy map and the scorecard. Um, maybe some of the KPIs will be documented but not to the full extent of the documentation form let's say um, in in the next period of time maybe uh, you you find the resources to also activate the performance uh, let's say the, the portfolio of initiatives or, or uh, other elements um, it's a matter of building it up somehow um, it's also a trial and error process for your organization the moment they start to uh, to think about this idea of launching a performance management system, uh, which is anyway is valuable. I mean, it's your experience. It's uh, it's what you've been operating. It's what you've been learning from this experience. It's still something that is better than doing nothing. The moment you realize the need, um, it doesn't have to be the masterpiece, but still it will be helpful and. Um, uh, yeah, it reminds me of all the professionals that uh, I have encountered in uh, in the projects, in either the training courses or the consulting projects, when uh, they've told me that uh, they've been building their BMS, but it was 
by what they thought it would be best to integrate in their system. Well, it's still a valuable experience rather than doing nothing because ultimately you have the resources, you have the chance to, to create the comparison in terms of what would be the best and the perfect system design. It doesn't have to come immediately. It's just a matter of exactly as building a house. Um, linking one brick to the other, building the roof, uh, um, of course, prior to this, building the foundation. So it's a matter of giving yourself the freedom and the chance to explore this and to, to create a valuable experience out of, um, out of each, uh, each attempt that you, are, uh, that you are taking. All right. And that reaches our time limit for the Q&A session. However, there are still a few more questions which I'll pass over to you and you can contact our attendees to answer them in greater detail there. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much for your presentation and do you have any last words for our listeners? Well, I'm, I'm really glad that um, all these questions have appeared into your uh, your mind by the time we've been discovering the the presentation. Uh, I'm very grateful for your uh, attendance, and I'm looking forward to meeting you soon. Thank you very much once again. The KPI Institute appreciates your interest in today's webinar KPI lifecycle from the first action to the best version. Follow our websites and our social media channels to find out more details about our next webinars whenever they get posted. Also, if you're interested in getting a certification granted by the KPI Institute on vital areas within the performance management discipline, you can explore any of our scheduled courses on marketplace.kpiinstitute.org. Thank you once again for your participation. We wish you the best of performance and have a lovely day.